Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. And today I just want to show you guys what you need to get RetroPie up and running. Now this is the hardware needed. Obviously, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi. Now this is a Raspberry Pi 2, but I use a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, you can also use a Raspberry Pi 1, 0, 3, or a 2. But I use a 3 because it is the most powerful one built so far. Next up, you are going to need an SD card. Now, I recommend a fast SD card. You don't have to go crazy with the price and speed. But this here is a 16 gigabyte Samsung Evo SD card. And this was only $8 at Best Buy on sale. I believe they run the sale a lot because this week, right now, April 15th, 2016, you can go into your local Best Buy and get one of those 16 gigabyte cards for $7.99. It's worth the extra speed. I have several SD cards. Now I have a couple class fours. The max that I've been able to write from the PC to it is about seven megabytes. This one, clocks in at up to 15 megabytes, average 12 megabytes. So we're doubling the speed of the write on the SD card, which definitely allows faster boot times on your Raspberry Pi, faster game loads. Next thing you're gonna need is a SD card reader if you do not have one built into your PC, because this is what we are going to flash our RetroPie image with to the SD card. And this has a bunch of uh, ports on it. I just use this front one here, which is micro SD. I have a USB drive for transferring ROMs. Now, most of the time, I transfer my ROMs over network, but I just want to let you guys know that you can transfer ROMs using your USB drive. Now, there is a problem with transferring ROMs over your USB drive. If you want to transfer anything over 800 megabytes, actually, I believe it's actually over 500 megabytes to your Raspberry Pi, let's say a Dreamcast game to your Raspberry Pi, you need to use your network. Network transfer is faster, easier, and it's just better to use. We can transfer lots of ROMs at one time. They transfer really quick over network. You're going to need a power supply. Now, you're going to need a decent power supply. I'm on the Raspberry Pi 3, and this is been chewed up, but this is a 2.5 amp dual output power supply. Now, this does 2.5 amps on each of the uh, outputs here. You can get away with using a 2 amp power supply but I do recommend getting at least a 2.5. They're making threes now for super cheap. Just make sure you get a decent quality power supply. Now, one of the other things that a lot of people overlook is your USB or your power cable for your Raspberry Pi. Now, I can get these literally for 50 cents a piece shipped. Not this one, this is from my NVIDIA Shield. This is a very high quality USB to USB micro. So what happens is, if your power supply puts out, let's just say three amps of power, and you have a cheap USB cable, it will not transfer three amps through that USB cable. That USB cable uses tiny, tiny, low quality conductive wire inside. Now I've torn a lot of USB cables apart and I have done a lot of tests seeing the amperage through USB cables and the cheap ones will only put out 500 milliamps. This here will transfer a full 2.5 amps through the line all the way to your micro USB. That is one thing that is very overlooked. You need to make sure you have a high quality USB cable if you have a power supply with a USB built in, just make sure it's decent wire inside of it. Make sure you check out the reviews on it to make sure it works like they state. 
Next thing, I have a wireless keyboard with a trackpad. Now this keyboard sucks. It really does. This is a, I got this for 10 bucks. I kind of regret spending $10 on it. The trackpad is horrible within Raspberry Pi. It works, it's very slow, and it's just so small. So I have, if I want to scroll across the screen, I got to go several times to go across the screen. This is wireless, it has the trackpad built in, and it has a little USB dongle that I plug into the Raspberry Pi unit. One of the last things you're going to need is a controller, unless you were going to play your games with the keyboard. And if you'd like doing that, go right ahead. You can do that. You can skip the controller part. But I recommend getting a controller. Now, recently, I have been using a PS3 controller because the new RetroPie 3.6 and 3.7 just came out. Will allow me to use my Bluetooth wireless PS3 controller to my Raspberry Pi 3 without an extra USB Bluetooth dongle, which is awesome because the Raspberry Pi 3 has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into it. Also have the cable for initial connection for my PS3 controller. But you can always use the go-to product here, which is a wired Xbox 360 controller. They work amazing with the retro Pi setup. Uh, I've never had any problems with this controller. I've had it for the three years now, I believe. And I got two kids and they have abused this controller and I've never had any problems. So I really like going wireless with the PS3 controller. I like the feel of this controller better because like I said, I've been using it for three years. But if you gotta get a wired controller, go ahead and get you an Xbox 360 controller. This is an off-brand rock candy which works just as well. And you're also going to need a computer. That's one of the main things. You can use your laptop, you can use your desktop, you can use your mom's or your grandma's computer. As long as you have internet connectivity and a USB card reader. Now if you have one built in, that's fine. I don't have one built in on my machine. So I just use this USB 2.0 memory card reader that's it guys that's this is what you need now I know you're looking at this and you're like oh man that's a lot to play games it is but if you want to do it this is what you got to get I really enjoy using my Raspberry Pi to play old school games on and if I got to go through using all of this stuff I'll do it I do not mind I know that I have a Android phone that I can play all of the games on in my pocket I know that I have an iOS device, iPhone 6S, I can play all the games that I want on that. My computer, I can run any game on my computer. My Mac, I can run any game on my Mac. But I always go back to my Raspberry Pi to use for old school emulation. I don't know why, it's just fun for me. Flashing the images to the SD card, setting everything up, it's, uh, it's enjoyable to me, and I like helping you guys out. So this is what you're going to need to get started with RetroPie, or Emulation Station, on your Raspberry Pi. One, two, three, or zero. If you're using the zero, you're going to need a couple more little adapters, but if you have one, you know what I'm talking about. I appreciate you guys watching. Sorry about this camera shaking. My daughter and my son are on the tripod messing with it while I'm recording. So, like I said before, guys, if you could hit that like button, subscribe. This is going to be a, I'm not sure how many part video, but I'm going to show you guys how to set up the new RetroPie 3.7. Set up your controller, add ROMs, add Kodi media player to it. Just all out get a awesome gaming media center built into your Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching guys.